There is a uh, construction working inside of my apartment right now. So if you guys hear that, any of you guys watching this video hear that, I apologize for that. And hopefully that doesn't pick up. So this time has come again to rank all current 11 Christopher Nolan films. Now uh, on a side note, uh, disclaimer, the number 11 on this movie, not saying that it's a bad movie. Every single one of Nolan's films are from being are from good to being really good and really great. So even at number 11, the movie at number 11, it's still a good film. So don't like give me shit for putting a certain movie lower than another. All of his films are really good. Or from good to great so don't give me any crap on that and secondly i did rewatch tenet just to uh, refresh my memory to you know, see where your rank changed a bit you know it, it didn't my opinion on the movie didn't change dramatically it's still a good movie but i feel like maybe someone should have tapped on nolan's shoulder and been like maybe i don't know do something else but who knows maybe that's just me so coming in on number 11 the and all of a sudden that person isn't part of the crowd anymore they become an individual just like that you learned you would never follow the same person twice so-called worst one quotated worst it's following 1998 his first film ever his first film he, he did you know short films here and there but his first direct or fulling film was following the concept by itself is already interesting apparently nolan based off this when his house got broken in it was interested in the thieves what they're doing or talking about when they were breaking into his apartment so it made sense to do a film about this and already the plot is already interesting with a certain guy having this niche and this itch to follow certain people around he's just curious curiosity got the best of him and already messing with time his obsession and fascination with time he uses it to his advantage in all of his movies aside from a couple of the movies already messing with time with the whole hair thing and all that stuff the whole hair thing the only negative for this movie is the fight scene and nolan himself has admitted that that was probably one of the hardest thing to shoot on a student film budget or whatever six thousand budget by the way they didn't really know how to shoot it and so it looked really weird and wonky it was really bad aside from that plot of this movie is what entice you it's in black and white cover all the lighting because you didn't have any lighting and the characters are just there i will admit they were just there over Rock following is just a good movie and a good start to Nolan's sort of filmography. At number 10, we'll why did you name me after something that's bad? Oh, we didn't. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law doesn't mean that something bad will happen. I have no idea when you're coming back. will be interstellar i might get shit for this but i know a lot of people that love this movie i get it it's a whole story about a man wanting to give back to his kids and family after being stuck in time and space for a very long time it's a very simple simplistic story a very heartfelt story about a family man but i don't know man everything else just nasa being this weird era 51 group cool i guess matthew mcconaughey gives an excellent performance i like anne hathaway his daughter's cool in the movie as well him having to go back in space matt damon as a cameo as a special appearance was cool matt damon again his desperation and his his, he has nothing to lose he's been stuck on that planet for like what felt like years and forever so any chance he gets to ruin like the mission try to get out that was the most scariest part the most intriguing part about the film aside from that it is a lot of looking around visually and in terms of spectacle it is cool i do think dunkirk is better which is a bit higher on this list you know i, I didn't enjoy this movie i do get that a lot of people did fuck with this movie but i just i, I just i guess i don't get it i don't know I, I guess i just don't get it i like it it's a good movie visual looks cool good story good simple story so number 10 is it is interstellar number what are you? I'm Gotham's reckoning. Kill me. Your punishment must be more severe. Mine is The Dark Knight Rises 2012. This is a good movie, pretty good movie. And I've kind of find figure out why I didn't like it as much as the other two Batman films, but I'll probably rewatch it. I think it is the whole trying to be happy for Bruce by Alfred. Well, that's good in a good in a way, good with it in the cap for the Batman, not the Batman, the Dark Knight trilogy. The whole cap, I mean, everyone knows in the comics and games, the Catwoman and Batman have this thing, but for them to be like official in the movie, I don't know. I just assume that anytime Batman gets in a relationship, it goes wrong. However, it is Nolan's vision and it does end on a good, satisfying note with Anne Hathaway's Catwoman, who I do like in this movie. A lot of people give her shit. I don't like her costume, but I do like her version of Catwoman. The him fighting happiness with Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. And also, Bane's, well, except not everything else. Bane's, played by Tom Hardy, he's threatening, but also hilarious. And that's a positive and a negative. Bane is supposed to be this scary big monster, but Tom Hardy's voice in this movie is just ridiculous. If you ask me, I just couldn't help but laugh at myself. Like, his voice is muffled by this huge ass gas mask or some shit. I don't know. But by the way, Tom Hardy played him, like, brilliantly in this film. Him breaking down Batman, both 
mentally and physically and both Bruce Wayne being on his lowest by the events of the Dark Knight letting Harvey Dent die and mentally and physically he's not there he is on his lowest until he is happy with Catwoman puffed up by Alfred and having the whole town of Gotham and the police department going against being in his army that was a cool fight and scene and I do like that Gotham police they, they don't they have a reason not to trust Batman no more because of what happened in Dark Knight and being gone for so long so when he does go come back and put on the bat suit and go back to Gotham and they kind of betray him it's like kind of makes sense you've been gone for so long and you kind of failed this city in the last movie seven eight years pass and you're still somewhat failing this scene because there's a weird funny threatening voice going around baseball stadiums and terrorizing and fulfilling Rachel Gould's mission which border voice okay it's fine it's like okay they needed something to bring Bruce out and get Bane in the movie so why not leave it there so number nine the Dark Knight Rises 2012 number eight condition it's my memory i'm not gonna remember this conversation what's the last thing that you do remember i'm not gonna remember this conversation <laughs> I didn't even know if I mentioned before. It is Memento 2000. This is a good movie. Sort of the start of Nolan's time. Sort of non-linear storytelling. This movie is told backwards. It starts from the end. Beginning of the movie. And I guess it ends somewhere in the end. I guess the ending is the end. And I first thought Brad Pitt is in this movie. It's not Brad Pitt. It's Guy Pearce. It already grabs you, hooks you by the ball. By the fact that told backwards. And he sure it's kind of played as a revenge flick. Trying to figure out who like assaulted him and his wife. But turns out Shocker Shocker twist twist. Turns out he... I guess purposely or accidentally killed his wife after the whole fighting happened. He overdosed her with insulin. And so in order to not feel guilty about it, he lies to himself. And with him having amnesia, he starts building up lies and starts to lie to himself so that he doesn't feel guilty. Now, whether he has amnesia on purpose or not, I'm going to assume yes, he does. Or maybe, oh, maybe, hold on. I don't even think about it. Maybe he's lying about his amnesia. Maybe he doesn't have like amnesia. He's lying. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't think I mentioned that. Maybe that's, oh, God. I didn't even think about that. This is a really good like twist movie and plays with sort of your perspective because you're seeing basically a man with amnesia who claiming to be a good man is actually kind of a horrible man maybe purposely acting and killing his wife so number eight is memento number seven everybody does welcome to the app Seven is his most recent movie, Tenet. Upon watching, it's still a good uh, movie. It didn't change my mind. It does. I'm not confused anymore, right? I get the gist of it, but I can get SP Wire like, what the hell is this movie, yo? Is this Nolan being free? And it, th I feel like this is Nolan kind of being like, not restricted and being like, all right, I'm doing whatever I want. And you know what? He did a fairly good job. Is it amazing? No, it's not as good as other movies, no. I feel like other six movies are better. But hopefully this is a, this isn't a decline of Nolan. Tenet is, is just pretty good. And rewatch it. People need to rewatch. Rewatch it to get it. If you still don't get it just watch youtube videos if you don't get it. that's number seven number six report that he clipped her nails he washed her head doing me here killing changes you yeah. it's like a weird Six is Insomnia 2002. I feel that this film is quite underappreciated, mainly because it is probably Nolan's the not the most non Nolan movie ever. Because in a very linear story, a simple story. I feel like most most movies, I feel like Nolan's movies are quite simple, not complicated at all. But most of the movies aren't very all that all that complicated. It's very simple. I like with with this movie, it's about two different people, two different. I guess oh man, Robert Al Pacino and Robert Williams, who one is a certified well-known cop, one is just an ordinary guy. Both commit. Very very heinous crimes and one feels that it is fine and one feels it is not right and very complicated in his feelings and when those two start clashing and start being in cahoots one starts becoming sort of conflict, like daddy do some purpose or not or not and so and this is one like one of the few roles that robin williams had like before he sadly passed away so seeing him in a movie that's like somewhat thriller and i guess scary was cool because he usually plays robin williams the comedy stuff so go see him in this as well him being okay with killing this young girl being sort of free that's the whole point of the movie right if these characters being being free from whatever they're at whether being it being a cop is being restricted to certain rules or as robert you know motivated doing what the hell he wants because feeling free over just killing a young girl being okay with it while but she knows being like he's conflicted he's okay with his cup buddy dying but not as well it's very complicated very it's not complex as tenet is but it's still very sort of complicated and mixed in terms of al pacino's character i think pretty good so it's at number six number five is stop We have a job to do. 
Dunkirk 2017. I was not expecting to like this movie as much as I did. As I said in the video, I not a war movie guy at all, and I feel like Nolan captured the aesthetic and realism of what war actually is. I really expected to like it, but I did. Very beautiful shots. Nolan's best like spectacle film ever. That long ass shot. It's fucking. It's awesome. I don't know. Again, I don't watch. This is currently my favorite war movie because I don't watch the war movies. So I don't know. Maybe I have to watch like Saving Private Ryan or something. Or I have no idea. But as of right now, this is my favorite war movie, and it's pretty damn good if you ask me. So that's a number five. Number four is now this top four. We're getting into the really good category here. But number four is. Gotham, their city doesn't belong to the crew. This Batman Begins. This is very hard between this and Dark Knight. This is a really good. This is probably the best Batman origin movie ever. Nolan takes his time in the first half to tell his sort of story of fear. Being Batman, aka Bruce Wayne, be consumed by fear itself. And in order not to feel that way, you know, he goes to a foreign country, training the League of Assassins. How he finds them, that doesn't matter. Ra's al Ghul, without knowing the fact that Liam Neeson is Ra's al Ghul, which I thought was kind of obvious that Ra's al Ghul was Liam Neeson. And then he goes back to his city of Gotham and innates fear into the scene of Gotham on criminals. And he's succeeds in it but while that's happening there's obviously some challengers one being scarecrow who i want to come back i want a live action scarecrow again because i think scarecrow is a cool villain Clayface, like there's other villains besides from the joker and scarecrow is one of those villains that are really cool and the actor who played them had that face and look and i love this like fear gas toxin scene where batman actually gets him and use the gas on himself and he sees the actual bat creature that was a scary scene and i sort of love nolan's portrayal of the batman of an actual of being an actual creature and in ain't fear to criminals despite just being a man in a suit and also, Ra's al Ghul comes back, and the reason as to why the League want to get rid of Gotham is they believe Gotham is, isn't worth saving, is beyond saving, but Batman does prove them wrong somewhat in the later sequels, but he, you know, he gets defeated easily. Uh, honestly, the weakest part is Ra's al Ghul. It's, it's whatever. It's fine. But it is a really good origin story for Batman, a really good Scarecrow, Alfred, and the whole fear arc was really awesome. So, number four is Batman Begins. Number three is... I mean, what happened? So what are you proposing? It's simple. Kill the bat. You aware of it? Oh, you have no idea. The Dark Knight 2008. Again, I had a hard time choosing between these two, Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, but I guess overall as a film and this favorite performances, I guess The Dark Knight wins over because of Heath Ledger's Joker and Batman failing as a hero. He he was promised and now in this movie, he's a well-known you know, threat to criminals and well-known to the city of Gotham. And when Harvey Dent dies, who by the way is very integral to this film because he is like the hope and savior for these people. He's the, the human savior while Batman may or may not be on their side. People don't know if he's on their side or not. And when he dies and kind of comes to face, who have lost hope and so in doing so they blame batman for it despite just being joker blame joker but joker just gets defeated but two people of gotham they sort of you know they lost harvey dent so batman feels like he's failed the city of gotham the people of gotham feels like he's failed police got gotham police department feel like he's failed and in doing so batman kind of wins but also doesn't because he fails and on the opposite joker wins either way because he's insane and obviously he knows that batman won't kill him because there's this ridiculous code and he plays on his heartstring on that like, like you're not gonna kill me motherfucker i'm gonna doing this and you're not gonna kill me he's smart he's always steps ahead especially in that bank high scene which when that school bus crashes in no one freaks out that is still ridiculous but he's always one step ahead he's also scheming too in that hospital scene he's just scheming against harvey dent like harvey dent is getting played so hard right now by batman by not by batman but by joker himself there's an explosion scene he's ledger there's any sort of praise that he gets because he's awesome in this movie he's a star he is chaotic one more for this movie is chaotic and that's amazing that's great so and batman does feel like a secondary character despite not being a secondary character this is more of a joker slash chaotic movie than batman film but yeah number three is the dark knight final two uh obviously you just are smart enough to know it's gonna be inception or the prestige but how to choose one so number two is a real magician tries to invent something new why there's a third act called the prestige the prestige just like with the trick in this movie and this whole movie is basically a magic trick it's a very simplistic story a very simplistic trick and we are following hugh jackman and he makes us believe that christian bale's trick is fishy he knew some sort of magic like actual magic, which leads to hugh jackman's character creating magic himself and cloning himself but we were just following the perspective of this madman he's slowly just going crazy because of this one trick by stunt double even alfred from the batman movies who's in this movie they, this actor who i don't know his name to fallout just 
just said in the very beginning of the movie, like, it's so simple. It's a stunt double or twin. He's like, Hugh Jackman's like, nah, 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 nah. It's gotta be complex, man. This is a trick. And in doing so, they have this rivalry, which starts by, I think, his, one of their wives dying? A magistrate gone wrong and a woman dies. You know, it creates a rivalry and slash tension between they always one up each other until that door scene, that door trick where there's a stunt double. And Hugh Jackman is so amazed by that. It's so simple. I remember seeing myself. It is a very simple trick. And I was led to believe by Hugh Jackman's character that Christian Bell did something magical, but it wasn't. He kills one half of Christian Bale's twin, kills all of his clones, but in return, Christian Bale kills Hugh, the final Hugh Jackman with all the hats laying around in that one scene, which is awesome. It's sort of a just imagery of how far one person would go to one up another person and kill sort of his rivalry. And it is insane. And apparently, people don't like this movie, or they like it, but they don't like it enough to give it higher than 75 76% on Rotten Tomatoes, which sucks. I think this movie is kind of being slept on, and more people should be watching. Kind of seems how simple it is and how much of a trick it plays on you as an audience because the whole movie is a magic trick number two is the prestige and the best nolan film number uno number one is a single idea from the human mind can build create from your memory always imagine new places Inception. This movie has it all for me. It reminds me of Freddy Krueger with the whole dream world thing. So that already entices me with Leonardo DiCaprio going to people's mind and subconsciousness. He has that rare ability. Cast, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ellen Page, uh, Tom Hardy, and that one guy who I keep forgetting the whole like hallway, like spinning scene. I forget that actor's name, but that was awesome scene as well. Building bending shit. That was awesome as well. There is, there's a lot of like cool set pieces as well. Near that third act, there's like a snow set piece just randomly too. Though again, the whole bending city, the whole... There's that one horror scene where his wife tries to come kill Ellen Page. I was ripped out of a horror scene, honestly. Him explaining like the whole war dream, or whatever, the exploding buildings, that was cool set piece. The whole turning hollow, hollow, I was about Halloween hallway scene, turning around thing was awesome. The whole stair scene was tight as well. A lot of cool like, set pieces, and it's a story about how a man just wants to get to his family. He blurs the line of reality and what's a dream world because his wife died for it, and so he has a paranoia of just wanting to be, or he has a paranoia of being stuck in the dream world. And in the end, Nolan initially like, purposely cuts off the ending because he has a stop thing to spend to see if he's in the real world or in dream world the movie ends and i guess people were confused by it but i suddenly took that as upon rewatching to him it didn't matter all he wanted to do in this movie his mission by the way was to plan an idea and someone and get away with it but his sort of alternative mission was to get back to his family and see his kids his lovely kids and whether it was, it was reality or dream doesn't matter and that to me is ultimately what the ending was trying to tell everyone it doesn't matter to him because he got to see his kids and his family again so in the end it doesn't matter that is it that is all of the current 11 Christopher Nolan films rank. Let me know what you guys would rank it. It's clearly going to be different. Let me know why it's different. Let me know why you love a certain movie more than others. You can agree or disagree with me. This is a lot of fun. This actually felt more time crunched than the main one and the Friday 13 one because I'm like currently moving or at least I think I'm moving. This was a fun of you know fun series and freshes to watch and go through. So yeah thank you for coming along this journey with me and thank you for watching and hopefully you guys will come watch me on my next sort of series or set of movies that I will discuss about. And thank you for watching.